Welcome to Magnifica.tv news program dedicated to providing church news. Today is Wednesday, January 24, 2024, and these are our headlines. The Pope has expressed in a television interview his personal opinion, according to which he likes to think the hell is empty. Cardinal Mueller has stated the Cardinals cannot promise absolute obedience to everything the Pope says because they must be faithful to their conscience. The Dutch Bishop Mozerns has been very critical of fiducia supplicants, but at the same time has asked scandalized Catholics not to leave the Church. The bishops of Netherlands have rejected the possibility of dealing with the regular couples and will only bless the persons. The Nicaraguan communist dictator has expelled the two bishops and the priests and the seminarians he had in prison and sent them to the Vatican. The Pope has shown in television interview his support for fiducia supplicant while stating that he likes to think the hell is empty. Pope Francis was interviewed on an Italian television channel, and in the interview he showed his support for the recent document, Fiducia Supplicans, which allows the blessing of homosexual couples, and said he hopes that hell is empty, although he made it clear that this is his personal opinion and not a dogmatic teaching. The Pope responded to a question about the document of the Dicastery for the Doctrine of the Faith, Fiducia Supplicants, which opens the possibility of blessing couples in irregular situations with respect to Catholic morals, including same-sex couples. Francis acknowledged that sometimes decisions are not accepted, but many times it is because we do not know. Then he reaffirmed the principle of all, all, all already expressed during the WYD in Lisbon. The Lord blesses all, all, all those who come. The Lord blesses all those who are capable of being baptized, that is, every person. But then people must enter into conversation with the Lord's blessing and see which way the Lord proposes to them. But we must take them by the hand and help them to walk that path, not condemn them from the beginning. According to the pontiff, this is the pastoral work of the church and is a very important task of confessors to whom Francis reiterates the invitation to forgive everything and treat people with great kindness. He himself reveals in 54 years of priesthood only once denied forgiveness because of the person's hypocrisy. The Lord is not scandalized by our sins because he is our father and he accompanies us. Pope Francis affirms, trusting that hell is empty. I like to think that hell is empty. Yes, it is difficult to imagine it. When I am saying, what I am saying is not a dogma of faith, but a personal thing of mine. I like to think that hell is empty. I hope it is so, he said. Cardinals also have a conscience and must be faithful to it so they cannot obey everything the Pope says, Cardinal Miller said. Cardinal Muller, in an interview with Crisis magazine, affirmed that according to the divinity, the divine authority of Christ, the revelation of God himself is the basis and the limit of the church's teaching and pastoral ministry. Relying on Lumen Gentium, the Cardinal explains that the bishops and priests teach, guide and sanctify the faithful in the name of Christ and in no way in the name of the Pope. But Catholics are not subjects of ecclesiastical superiors, to whom they hold blind obedience, as in a totalitarian political system. The former prefect of the doctrine of the faith stresses that, in a culture far removed from Christianity, it is important to interpret ecclesiastical authority not in terms of political power and media manipulation of opinion but in the light of the revelation of God in Christ, as the light that illuminates every human being and leads to eternal life. 
He therefore maintains that even the cardinals of the Roman Church cannot pledge absolute obedience to the Pope and sacrifice their conscience and experience for a questionable agenda. In this sense, the German cardinal affirms that in a case of flagrant and notorious contradiction, God forbid to the teachings of sacred scripture or to the dogmatic definitions of the doctrine of the faith. The faithful would no longer be obliged to obey him and so to speak would lose his right, says Muller about the hypothetical case of having a, ret a heretic pope. The personal charism of infallibility ex cathedra must not be confused with the special grace of being saved from sin and apostasy in the state of pilgrimage. Muller responds to the question of what the church's teaching is on how to deal with a heretic pope. Cardinal Muller defends that bishops and the pope can only use the authority given to them by Christ to bring people to God through the word and the holy sacraments and in no way damage the credibility of the church by nepotism and favoritism or by ingratiating themselves with the spirit of the age. Furthermore, he states that Catholic must not confuse the article of faith of the teaching and jurisdictional primacy of the Roman bishop as successor of Peter with a court of personality as also occurs in secular contexts. Bishop Mutzert's auxiliary bishop of Hertenborch has asked Catholics scandalized by fiducia supplicants not to leave the church. A Dutch bishop warns that, in fiducia supplicants and other documents, the meaning of sin is intentionally changed and concepts are emptied of content. He also criticizes that the word pastora is used to set aside doctrine and shows the disastrous results of this practice in his own country, the most secularized in the world. In spite of everything, his message is one of hope. In a text public, published by LifeSite News, Monsignor Mutsat, Ozilali Bishop of Hetogenbosch, makes one of the harshest criticisms so far of fiducial supplicants. The recent declaration of the dicastery for the doctrine of faith aligned the blessing of couples in irregular or same-sex marriages. In the prelate's opinion, the document is not so much a broadening of meaning of the blessings, but rather a deliberate modification of what sin is. In this sense, Bishop Musat goes so far as to describe the declaration as a cowardly document for not qualifying homosexual practices as intrinsically wrong. In particular, the bishop criticizes the emptying of the word pastora, which is used to set aside the magisterium to oppose doctrine and life, and then to tolerate a life at odds with doctrine. This means that pastoral care is no longer care of the soul, but a care without a soul. The clash of morality against dogmatics can be found not only in fiducial supplicants, but also in amoris lauticia. All this is the work of subjectivism and relativism, which reign today in the dicastery for the faith of the doctrine of faith turned into a dicastery of the construction, says the bishop. Monsignor Mozart offers the example of his own country, where these tendencies began in the 60s, and doctrine was completely eroded. It was precisely there that pastoral theology was invented. The result has not been devastating. Libra seminaries and congregations are dying, and the church in the Netherlands is almost comastose. The average age of the parishioners is over 70. Overall, the bishop wants to offer a message of hope. The trend towards the disappearance of progressive groups and the resurgence of groups faithful to the faith of the church indicates that, in time, things will end well. What to do? The prelate finally asks and answers, Stay in the church. Do not abandon the church. It is the church of Christ. Fiducia supplicants will now be applied in the Netherlands as bishops have refused to bless irregular couples as called for the Vatican statement. The bishops of the Netherlands have been the latest so far 
to collectively reject the possibility of offering non-liturgical blessings to couples in irregular or same-sex relationships. They admit the blessing of individual to invoke the Holy Spirit so that they can fulfill God's will. The Bishop Conference of the Netherlands has disallowed blessings of prayers for couples that could be interpreted as approval of lifestyles in contradiction with the moral teaching of the Catholic Church. Instead, the bishops recommend the prayers to be offered for individuals in such relationships, invoking God's assistance in discerning His will for the individual person. What is asked for in prayer and how one prays are important. For someone living in an irregular or homosexual relationship, the ordained minister may say a simple prayer outside the context of a wedding or prayer celebration. In this prayer, one can ask God for strength and help, invoking his spirit so that he or she understands God's will for him, for his or her life, and can continue to grow. This makes it clear in the chosen words that it is not a blessing or confirmation of an irregular relationship and also avoid confusion with a marriage which according to the Catholic Church can only be celebrated between a man and a woman. In this way, prayer can empower one to draw closer to God and live according to his purposes for the creation of man and woman and marriage. Ortega, the communist dictator of Nicaragua, has had his way and has expelled the two bishops, priests and seminarians he had in prison, sending them to Rome. Monsignor Alvarez, imprisoned by the Nicaraguan dictatorship for almost two years. Monsignor Mora Otenga, two seminarians and 15 priests have been deported from the country after being imprisoned. All of them, with the exception of one, have arrived at the Vatican. Mosigno Alvarez, Bishop of Matagapa, an apostolic administrator of the Diocese of Esteli, sentenced to 26 years in prison, had been in jail since February of last year. Mosigno Mora was arrested last December. Already last year, in October 12, 12 Nicaraguan priests have been released from prison. The Holy See had accepted the request to receive them. The priests were received in Rome and housed in some of the diocese's buildings. The media, sympathetic to the opposition of the dictatorship, qualified the action as a banishment. On the other hand, the regime presents the situation as follows. The Presidency of the Republic, the Government of the Reconciliation and National Unity, and the people of Nicaragua deeply thank the Holy Father, Pope Francis, the Secretariat of State of the Holy See, its head, Cardinal Pietri Paroline, for the very respectful and discreet coordinations made to make possible the trip to the Vatican of two bishops, 15 priests, and two seminarians. Mosigno Baez, auxiliary bishop of Managua, who was the first prelate to be forced to leave the country, reported the release of the bishops assuring that Otega's criminal dictatorship has ceded to the power of God. Our editorial this week is dedicated to commenting on the situation created in the Church after the publication of Fiducia Supplicant. The Fiducia Supplicant's declaration has not created division in the Church. What it has done is to expose the division that already existed the most striking thing, it seems to me, has been the collective rejection of the Episcopal Conferences of Africa to the application of the Declaration in their countries. A rejection nuanced this week, because Cardinal López Romero, Archbishop of Rabat, has said that the bishops of North Africa were not allowed to give their opinion, because although they had been consulted, Cardinal Ambongo published a response to the Declaration before the deadline given to all the Episcopal conferences had expired. Therefore, they somehow feel excluded from this rejection of fiducia supplicans. They have made their own. They have given their own response, which is with some nuances different from what the other rest of the African bishops. But if there is division, if there are two parts, 
it is because in one hand there are those who have rejected the declaration, I repeat, with more or less nuances, nuances that have always and in all cases aimed at not offending the Pope and not to confront him. And on the other hand, there are those who have enthusiastically accepted fiducia supplicans within this group. Of course, the Catholic Church in Germany stands out. They are not the only ones, but the Catholic Church in Germany within the group of enthusiasts is the most part, and therefore I think it's appropriate to know some data on how the Church is in this country. Some years ago, it was said, it was published, that for the next few years the Church in Germany was going to be forced to close more than 40,000, 40,000 parishes, parish houses, pastoral centers. And why? It seems incredible, but the reason is that there is no money. It is the richest church in the world, and yet it is so because it establishes the religious tax and threatens with apostasy and excommunication to those who not pay this tax. Those who do not pay the tax are declared apostates and therefore cannot participate in certain acts of the church. Many people, for fear of this pay, it is the richest church, and yet they think of closing centers of all kinds depending on them because they see that the pays they are going to run out of money. And what is this pace to which they go? For example, in the year 2022, there is no data yet for 2023, which has just ended. In 2022, more than half a million Catholics officially left the church. 523,000, which represents 45 more abandonments than in the year 2021, which was already a very high figure and the highest that had occurred until then. More than half a million abandoned the church in one year, officially, because as long as you do not pay the tax, you are officially out of the church, you have renounced to be Catholic, and it is registered in the baptism certificates, you are no longer a Catholic, you have abandoned the church, if you do not pay, you are not a Catholic. Well, more than half a million have left the church. In 10 years, 739 monasteries have been closed in Germany, and this week it has been learned that the Diocese of Edinburgh, which is headed by Bonsignor Batzing, who is the president of the German Episcopal Conference, and which has in its territory the important and the rich city of Frankfurt, that diocese in the year 2023 has not ordained any priest which is the first time that this has happened in its entire history. Something even much worse, a news that comes to me directly from the parish in Berlin. The pastor has announced to his collaborators that by order of Archbishop Monsignor Koch in this parish and the Diocese of Berlin, it will be possible to give communion to Protestants as long as they are married to a Catholic. If a Protestant, usually a Lutheran, comes to communion and is married to a Catholic, he can receive communion. This is sacrilege, and it is a dreadful sacrilege, much more serious than anything else. And yet, this is already public. Not only was it done, but it was already public notice to the German parish priests to do. Well, this German church in this great crisis, without clergy, and with a tremendous loss of faithful every year, presents itself as the winner, and also presents itself as the future of the church. On one side, we have a poor, martyr church, which is a church in Africa, but which is rich in vocations, which is continually growing. On the other side, we have a rich church, well off, but without vocations, and with a dreadful loss of faithful every year. The normal, the logical thing would be to look to the church in Africa, that poor and martyr church, to look at it as the model to follow, and instead, the Germans say that they are the model to follow, that they give their arguments. 
They say that with fiducia supplicants, the most important thing has not been the acceptance of blessing of couples in an irregular situation, including homosexual couples, because they say we are already doing this and what they have told us is now that now we can do it legally. But they say this has not been the most important thing. The most important thing, according to the Germans, what makes them sing victory and present themselves as the future, is something that was presented as untouchable within the doctrine, is now allowed and not because there has been a doctrinal change of something that was declared true a hundred years ago or five hundred years ago or something that was forbidden five hundred years ago and is now permitted but because that change has taken place within two years and under the same Pope, say the Germans. If in 2021 it is forbidden to bless irregular couples, and in 2023, with the same Pope, it is permitted to bless irregular couples, with the theological flourish of a new type of pastoral blessing that according to the author did not exist before. But in practice, even if it's insisted, that the union is not blessed, even if it's insisted that the extramarital relationship, extramarital sexual relationship, it's still considered a sin. The Germans say, if in two years the doctrine has changed, and what was forbidden is now allowed, we have sufficient reason to believe that we are in a situation where other things will also be allowed that are now forbidden and what is considered a sin will cease to be considered a sin and will be even considered a path for sanctification. This is their thesis, their right. Has the Church of Certainties, so necessary in a liquid world, in a world full of doubts, has the Church of Certainties of St. John Paul II, to which the theologian Ratzinger helped so much, disappeared? Has Pope Benedict XVI's struggle against relativism in the Church has been defeated? Has doubt been introduced within Felucia Supplicans? Has doubt been introduced within the Church in such a way that now there is no longer anything that can be considered solid and firm and immovable, because what was once considered impossible is now permitted, and what is today considered impossible and sinful, and what you will, it's not known if tomorrow, sooner or later, will be considered possible and even recommendable? Are we in a church that is entrenched in doubt and therefore entrenched in moving within relativism? These are decisive questions. The Germans have it very clear. They have won. They are the church of the future. And they say it. All this time, they have not put the accent on the fact that couples in an irregular situation can be blessed. They have put the accent, what they consider their victory and their future, in the fact that a change has taken place, and that in two years what was forbidden is now allowed. This is what they say. They are right. Well, I do not think it will take long to find out who is right and if the church of the future will go the way of the German church, or if it will go the way of the African martyr church. If you wish to be updated on what is happening in the church, you can visit our website www.magnifica.tv. See you next week, God willing.